Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the contents of the My Monthly Hero Kit for Hero Arts for April 2022 and create two projects for you. I'll also be telling you what to do and what not to do when using the layering stencil. In this month's kit, you are getting a background stamp that coordinates with the three-piece layering stencil, a 3 by 4 sentiment stamp set, word dye that cuts out the word amazing, some frame cuts, enamel dots, and some mini ink cubes. And also a mini blending brush. Here is a look at how that three-piece layering stencil works with the background stamp. I had a really great response to my sneak peek card where I did some rainbow ink blending. So I'm going to show you how I did that using reactive inks. And then I'm also going to create the second card here using some colored card stock. I will be showing you some errors that I made on my card and how to avoid them. I still included the card in the video, but I just wanted to point out a couple things that I think will be helpful for you. So a lot of times when I'm stamping an image and then I want to place a stencil on top of it, my black ink needs to dry completely or it will smear. So I'm actually starting with the Hero Arts Onyx Pigment Ink. It is a black pigment ink. The reason I'm using pigment ink is because it stays wet a little bit longer and allows me to apply clear embossing powder to it to trap the black ink underneath. Now, a couple things with this is you want to make sure that you are completely covering all of that ink. So here I am sprinkling on that clear embossing powder and then I'll tap off any of the excess. This card is using lavender cardstock, but I also did one on white cardstock. On the white cardstock, I only stamped an intensified black ink. I did not heat emboss it. I just set it off on the side to dry. So right here I am melting that embossing powder and on my white piece of cardstock, I'm just using my heat tool to help dry that ink and just speed up that process a little bit. I'm going to bring this over to my glass surface to do some ink blending. On this first layer of the stencil, there are some registration marks in the corners of the stencil where if you have a bigger piece of cardstock, you can ink blend over those little squares to help line up the stencil. But I found that this lines up real easily even without using those registration marks. The first layer of the stencil is the most open area of the stencil to cover the entire flower. And I'm going to go in a rainbow order. So I started with, now these are all reactive inks. I started with taffy. Then I came in with creamsicle. This is lemon drop. And then next I'll be using key lime fizz. And I want to make sure to kind of blend into the next color. I don't need a heavy coat here. I just want a light layer of color because we have another layering stencil to place on top. Now this one is splash. I can start to see I'm running out of room to finish off my rainbow. And then finishing off with grape slush reactive ink. Now that this first layer is complete, I will remove my magnets that were holding my stencil down. And you can see how this is starting to come together where the colors blend into each other for the beautiful rainbow going down the front of the card. Since I just ended with purple, I am going to start with purple and just work my way backwards, blending over those areas I just did. Now, some of them may overlap, so the purple might go into the blue, which is perfectly fine because those look gorgeous together blended. Now, I'm coming back in with the splash and then the key lime fizz. I'll come back with my lemon drop and making sure to kind of blend into that next color a little bit to help that transition. Then I have a creamsicle and I'll finish off with taffy. I'm also applying a little bit heavier of a hand here to add more ink and deepen that color since this is the same color on top of one another. Then I can just remove that layer of the stencil and how gorgeous is this? I, I absolutely love these rainbow flowers. Now this is the third layer of the stencil, which is the leaves. And for this, I am just gonna use key lime fizz all over the entire background. So once I finish up this background, I'm going to take my stencils and just rinse them off in the sink. It cleans off really easy because we use the reactive inks. And that will finish off my rainbow flowers, which I think turned out absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm bringing in the piece of cardstock. This is the lavender background that I had heat embossed with clear embossing powder. And I'm starting off by ink blending with the Berry Smoothie Reactive Ink using the first layer of the stencil. Then I'm going to bring in the second layer of the stencil to add the details of the flowers using grape slush. Now this background is one of my favorite color combinations for this, but I messed up the card in the end. Tip number one, 
make sure everything is completely heat embossed because that is a pigment ink. If you miss it, it doesn't get heat embossed. It will definitely smear. Number two tip that I have for you is do not use an adhesive eraser on this. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. I don't know if that's what happened, but that's what I used and I messed up part of my background. Now this third layer of the stencil, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. This is Key Lime Fizz. And then I'm bringing in Green Apple Reactive Ink and just kind of doing some spotlight ink blending. I didn't know if this green was gonna show up really well, but I was very happy with how it turned out. Now that all the flowers have color to them, the only thing that the stencil doesn't color are the bees. So off screen, I went back to my white background with the rainbow flowers, trimmed that down to just a panel, making sure to incorporate all of the colors in the rainbow there. And then I'm just coloring in my bees, my bees with some Copic markers. I have just a light and a dark color Copic marker. I apologize, I did not write down the colors. I just kind of grabbed them from my stash. Now here I trimmed down some gold glitter cardstock into some thin strips. It's maybe like an eighth of an inch or so. And I'm adding them to the very edges of this strip that I cut out using a dot runner or you could use liquid glue. I added some double-sided foam to the back of my panel, removed the backing of that, and then I'm adding this at a diagonal on top of a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I realize it does not fit all the way across. And at first I thought it looked kind of funky, but honestly, I kind of like it just because it's different than anything I really see. Most times those strip of panels or that panel goes all the way across to cardstock and I just, I wanted to be different and I really like how it turned out. So this is a smaller sentiment that I'm going to be adding to the front of my card and I just placed it down onto some black cardstock. I'm prepping that cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and then I'm inking up this smaller word using the Unicorn Pigment Ink. I'll stamp that down once or twice, just depending on the coverage. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on white embossing powder. After I tap off the excess, I'm gonna melt this with my heat tool and I have beautiful coverage because I use the embossing powder and also that pigment ink. So that is my favorite way to do white heat embossing. And then I'm just taking my mini trimmer and trimming that sentiment down into a thin strip. Included in the kit is this beautiful scripty word, amazing. So I die cut it three times from black cardstock and layered those together with liquid glue and then added it to the shadow piece that is die cut from white cardstock. I'm popping that up with some foam squares onto the front of my card. And then my smaller sentiment, I have some thin black foam squares that I'm gonna put right underneath. So this says amazing teacher. I'm going to finish it off by taking a white jelly roll pen and just adding little white dots to the center of my large flowers. Now I'm going to move on to my second card, which is where I use the lavender cardstock background. I previously trimmed this background down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And off screen, I die cut out two pieces using white cardstock and the wood frames infinity die. And I'm layering them together with this Scotch advanced tape glider. The reason I used it is because I really wanted these to hold together and liquid glue might have seeped through those kind of frame cuts in there. So that's why I used it. Now here is where I messed up. I should add in some like sound effects. I added it to the card base. I don't know why I did this. I should have added it to the frame. But when I went to place my frame on top, I had some adhesive showing and I wanted to get rid of it. Well, it wasn't rubbing away. It almost seemed like I was rubbing away some of the embossing powder or the ink. I brought in this uh, adhesive eraser and that made it worse. I smeared it. I don't know if, if I didn't heat emboss certain areas or if I was erasing the embossing powder. Not really sure what happened, but I thought I'd go ahead and finish this card off this is just a sentiment stamped onto white cardstock that I trimmed down into a small rectangle. So I love the background, I loved the concept, but I kind of smudged up some areas. Not sure if you can see it. And the second card I'm showing you here is just where I used, uh, I think it was grape slush and a blue ink. I don't remember what the blue ink color was, but the blue ink was the second layer of the stencil. That one actually turned out. So I just wanted to show you both samples of how those will look. So mistakes and all, I hope you enjoyed today's card projects. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Now this is a My Monthly Hero Kit, which means if you don't subscribe, you could possibly miss out on this amazing deal. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.